All right, Lang Cruiser lovers. What we got here is a very rare Land Cruiser to hit the shores of the US. This is a 1996, not an FCJ. This is an HDJ81. So what does that mean? H is diesel and this is Japanese spec. All Land Cruisers are made in Japan actually since inception except for a few after the years of uh, 84 in Brazil for the 40s and other market for the 60s. But for all intents and purposes, Land Cruisers are built in Japan and they got diesels. The majority were diesels. They do get some gas powered ones, but this one is diesel. And what makes it special is this could be one of the first, if not the first 24 valve 80 series to make it to US shores. Why? Because there is a 25 year um, rule. You cannot import until they're 25 years old. And that was just this past summer on this vehicle, sat, you know, just like uh, all the boats off the docks of Long Beach waiting to be unloaded, finally got unloaded. And I feel so fortunate to get my hands on it. Someone else imported it, did all the dirty work. I'm the lucky guy just to buy it. Cars in the background are cars and coffee. I'm here in San Clemente, Southern California. So, this truck is phenomenal. I drove it from Scottsdale, Arizona. So I flew out there yesterday morning, drove it back. Haven't even washed it yet. This thing is clean as can be. Yes, Land Cruisers never came black. So this is aftermarket painted, 117,000 miles. Those, those Land Cruisers that come out of Japan hardly get any miles. Some of the cool features on a Japanese one. Turn signal is here. So when you turn, this actually lights up to light up what you're gonna turn into. So here's one of the first things I gotta say about 80 series. So a lot of you know, you know, some 80 series go for huge dollars. There's some that are like just, you know, major restoration, rotisserie, take it off, redo it. And I guess in a way I don't get it. Like for instance, there's that Joe Rogan Land Cruiser. It's beautiful, but 200 grand, I could get six of these. And why, you know, why does someone want to put an LS? Well, because 212 horsepower, you want to get something more capable, faster. That's what we want in this day and age, you know, fast forward 25 years. Well, guess what? A diesel, even though the horsepower is not huge, 168 or so, it's the torque, right? You know, if you know diesels, it's all about the torque. This thing is a freight train. I was cruising, if you know the gas powered one, this one I was cruising 75 miles an hour at about 2200 RPMs, just effortless. And going up hills, Palm Springs, if anybody's driven an FJ there, it's, a, it's an incline. And this just cruised right on, right on up. So pretty phenomenal. Um, I do have two other uh, 80s at home and I will do a comparison. So if you wanna know more about, hey, do I, do I get a diesel one? Because I, I actually bid on this on Bring a Trailer. That's where it was. Do I get a diesel or do I get an FZJ? The FJ, you know, has the carryover engine from the FJ62. That's um, 3FE, 4 liter um, fuel injection, but 100 and uh, I'm trying to remember, 150 horsepower on that one, but gas powered. So nowhere near the torque that this has. So this definitely phenomenal, phenomenal truck. One of the other things you'll notice on a Japanese model, there's my dogs who are loving it and they're loving that platform. So they're head level with the window. Look at that, no split. And these do come, the bars were taken off, comes with a bar that goes across here to hold in curtains, believe it or not. But they did get the same, you know, concave FJ wheels. Just this is so much fun. And man, black cars look better in the shade, don't they? So if you like Land Cruisers, if you're looking for an 80, well, this is a, um, a channel to come to for sure. <clears throat> I compare an 80 to a 100. So if you're kind of on the fence, which way do I go? V8 or inline six, I compare an 80 to a 60 series. Um, and this is, you know, not just me posting pictures that I find online. It's me hands on both trucks in my driveway you know, showing you all the different features and cool things. But definitely a great truck. I think diesel, diesels are something that have to be reckoned with. And if you're thinking about getting an FJ, 
80, well, FZJ80 or HDJ. Um, start making your move soon because these are just going to go up in value. Uh, I will post a video talking all about 80s after this. This is just kind of to highlight because I just brought this home. So don't smash that subscribe button. Tread lightly. Just click it and uh, you'll be posted with anything Land Cruiser. I have three diesels. So this year I got three diesels. I have an HZJ73. That's the one HZ engine, I, which is not turboed. I have a 12 HT HJ61 and I have this. I just fell in love with the diesels. Man, if we ever got these back in the day, they would have dominated. Plus, if uh, that video, I'm gonna talk all about 80s, I'll post it uh, in the description once it's done, or you'll see it as a suggested video at the end of this one. Um, definitely check it out because I'll talk about how many did they make of these? Where's the market going? Because it's supply and demand, right? Because think about it, Australia, they got a lot of diesel 80s. And hell no, they'll never, you can't pry it from their dead hands. They will not give them up. So it's pretty much Japan is where these are coming from. And by the way, that right hand drive is so much fun. A lot of people are like, how do you do it, man? It must be weird. You know what? It really isn't. Because um, once you're driving, you know, as long as you're driving on the right hand side of the road and it's not, that's not flipped. It's really no difference. The weird thing is if you are passenger, and I have been passenger in a, another right-hand drive with my daughter, and that's why they got the oh shit bar, because you're thinking to yourself like, where's my brake? Where's my gas? Why am I not driving? Because you're so used to being on the left-hand side driving. That's the funky part. But if you're right-hand drive, it feels normal. It feels great. So, diesel's where it's at, folks. And I do have an extremely capable, beautiful FZJ 1995, I call Otis. I still have to name this one. But uh, it'll be interesting, because this one just drives like a dream. My wife has an LX570, when I came home with this, I was like, honey, my 80, I think, might be even smoother than your LX570 with this diesel motor. It's just so smooth, folks. All right, well, subscribe. I will be posting more. And actually, crazy, I'll do one video on telling you how I got this for free with a little asterisk. So something to consider if you're in the 80 market. But boy, what a beautiful design, right? Built to last, folks. This is at its infancy, barely broken in at 117,000 miles. We got the roof racks on our gas powered ones here, but they actually do it in the port. They have a template, they put it down, they drill the holes, they put the roof rack in. That is not done in Japan. All right, so subscribe. I'll post some fun, more fun Land Cruiser stuff. Not sure if I'll wheel with this one, but man, I will drive this everywhere and not be concerned. Again, I was gonna say, coming back from Scottsdale, one tank with some leftover of diesel fuel. And you guys know, with an FZJ, a trip to Phoenix from, from Los Angeles, that's a two tank trip, man. This took one tank. So, no more uh, complaining about your MPGs. All right, thanks for tuning in, and I will be posting some more fun videos about this truck and uh, comparison to gas powered. All right, happy trails, folks.